So let's move on. So over the weekend, bunch, bunch of, bunch of uh, more random nonsense came out. So let's take a look at it. Um, let me change the scene and let's go from the top. So give me a second. Here we go. So first things first, this weekend got off to an interesting start on, um, I think it was Saturday when Kramnik made this post, which I think you guys can see on the scene, which is have just watched this video record a few years ago. Hope everyone cheats while the courage to help publicly as Baron at least hope his opponent drawing against computer and the game was found and banned as well. Now, a couple of things. I did see this post um, on the weekend from Kramnik. Now, first things first, I can try to be generous and give Kramnik the benefit of the doubt um, and think that he was referring to something different. But my general takeaway is that he was not. So first things first, he talks about a video. Um, and let me let me pull this down and, and pull this up. Um, so yeah, he was referring to a video of somebody who cheated many years ago in 2015 by the name of Tal Baron. Now, Tal Baron put out a video. Uh, he talked about his cheating. I'm not going to go through the video itself. But there was one critical moment where he spoke about cheating. Um, and very specifically, he referred to um, he, he referred to his cheating. I um, mean, he said that he was on eight and eight, eight out of eight points. And in round nine, he was paired versus an obvious engine user, user and he cheated with an engine. So first things first, um, unfortunately, I think Kramnik probably did not watch this video in depth and he was trying to make a different insinuation. But let's go through all the details. So first things first, um, the event that Baron was referring to in his video was this event entitled Tuesday. Um, and this was an event where he was on eight points out of eight points going into the last night. It was titled Tuesday, October 6th of 2015. Now, round number nine, he did draw his game with eight out of eight. He drew against the number nine seed, which would be Faku 57, rated 2538. And I am here. He drew this game and he won the tournament with eight and a half. But of course, that player was not me. So that's the first thing that that's the stop saying first things first. OK, apologies. But anyway. All right. So this is the game that Tal Baron is referring to in the video. But Kramnik, I think. Um, he found that I had actually played a game against Tal Baron. And I actually remember going back to these days of 2015, there were two GMs who were playing a lot of the title Tuesdays in the early days. Those two players of the, amongst the top were myself and Maxime Vashe Le Grop. So, so now both of us were quite concerned about Tal Baron at any point. Um, but the reason I think Kramnik brought this up actually had nothing to do with the number nine player in this event. I think Kramnik was referring to a different game which was a game that I played against Tal Baron actually um, all the way back in 2015. Now, again, Kramnik has his facts wrong, but I do believe that we should not take what he says in good faith. I think he's doing it on purpose. Um, and so he's probably referring to this game that I drew against Tal Baron in a title Tuesday and not actually the event that Tal Baron is referring to in his video. Now, first things... Uh, I was about to say first thing. Sorry, apologies. I, should, I shouldn't say that because I, I annoyed you guys. Um, but the main thing... So I have a game here, which is 26 moves. I get absolutely blasted off the board, 98.3 versus 77.1. Now, I also did play Tal Baron on August 4th of 2015. And let's take a look at this game. Or wait, wrong. There we go. There's the game. All right. So first things first about this game. Ugh, keep saying again. Ugh. Scramble language. Scramble language. Okay. So let me ask people a important question. Let me adjust the chat as well. Cause this is a, this is a question that I, many people, I want to see how many people here have actually watched my stream in depth. Okay. Draw versus cheater equals you cheater automatically. Yes. But, but this is the thing. So let's say you're playing someone who's cheating. How do you survive against someone who is cheating? How do you survive? Let me, let me ask chat. The video should be synced with me, but how do you, how do you survive? Cause I've played many people in a rain King, rainy Kings and other events. How do you survive? Oh, uh, you flag them. Yes, so you flag them. So people say hippo. Okay, hippo and flag. Now, what does that mean in general terms? That means that you move really, really quickly and you close the position. So let's go through this game, okay? We're not going to go really deep through it. Anyway, pretty standard opening. I bring the queen back. You can see that it's a little bit different. I get, a, uh, I get this little hedgehog position. But you'll notice that my time is very high here. We do have the timestamps of this game. I'm over three minutes at the start of this game. Cheat too. Good one. So clog the toilet. Yeah, so... What has happened here? We end up with this position where we end up with a clogged position. It's closed position. And already here, we're only 15 moves into the game. And I'm already up over one minute on the clock. So why I tilt down to 2800? This is back in the old days. So let's just keep going. OK, already here, you can tell I'm a little bit worse. But there are some mistakes, obviously, um, that are made here. But he's now under one minute. And I have two minutes and 40 seconds. So you can tell from this game very clearly that I thought that there was something wrong with this game because I never moved this quickly. So I make every move immediately, every move. Um, anyway, I somewhere in this middle, I do have one chance where apparently the computer says I'm OK, I guess here. Bishop g4, I guess knight c4 makes more sense. Um, where a computer actually says I'm a little bit better here. If I play the very obvious move, king g2 or bishop g4. But anyway, I play bishop a1. Okay, apparently here I'm better for move. If I trade everything off, I play rook b3. Eh, 
We get knight b6, takes. I play bishop g4, rook b8, rook takes, takes. Bishop d1 here, get h5. Now already you can tell, not a very good position. But my one hope here is that I'm still on two minutes and 22 seconds, and my opponent is down to 32 seconds. So I go king g2, get queen a6, bishop e2, and mistake. We get bishop h6, rook c4 queen b5 and you can tell that now it's really starting to get very bad for me I play rook c2 we get queen b1 and by the way of course this is where I spend a bit of time on these moves and now I play a4 after a 30 second thing now one of the great things is that Dubov did point this out actually speaking uh, speaking of someone who's, who's mentioned this topic where engines were not as strong back in the old days versus now that is absolutely legitimate that is something that people will say um however in some of these positions like this one specifically we're in an end game here in end games, most of the suggestions are going to be pretty similar and very straightforward positions like this where it's closed, not a lot of piece play, pawn structure, very stable. So I've spent 30 seconds. I play a4 and we get c4 takes. We get knight c5. And as you guys can tell, it's getting really bad for me now. Now I'm in a lot of trouble. So I play queen b1 after another 17 second thing. And rook b2 is the best move. So I trade the queens. I go rook a2, d3 play bishop f3 and apparently bishop d3 and a5 is the best way to play this position and computer says after rook b8 black's much better but it's not lost but no I go bishop f3 we get d2 here and now I play a5 and wrong move again apparently bishop c3 is the only move where I'm a little bit worse so I play a5 no I'm giving the and like raw it's like the wrong answer when you when you answer a question wrong so I play a5 and now I'm very lucky because he blunders with knight a6 here computer says after knight to d3 it's minus uh 3.27 I'm getting just blown away so he plays knight a6 so now computer says 0 0.84 here so I take right so now it's like I'm back in the game uh he makes a queen I take take and now I play rook b2 goes bishop g7 I trade and now I play e5 and another big mistake here because in this position after rook a2 black is still better but it's not clear cut so I go e5 plays rook a1 rook b5 knight c7 rook c5 here here rook, knight c7 big mistake by the way after rook a4 black is completely winning so he plays knight c7 I go rook b7 another actually no that is the best move we get knight e6 and now I go rook a7 rook a4 I play a6 and here he blunders with this move rook takes c4 uh stop with an eh, it's so annoying of course it's annoying but that's the whole point um so here knight c5 is completely winning for black so rook c4 rook b7 and now of course the position is very easy to play here because essentially black can't really do anything with the king I can go f4 walk the king all the way back up the board and the game does eventually end in a draw here after many more moves um I end up getting my king all the way up the board here and eventually we end up with this position being a draw so great game right I'm getting out I get outplayed the whole game I'm in a lot of trouble and I'm able to save the game simply because my opponent got low on time simply because he got low on time and he was not able to find the best moves so that's the bottom line um in, in general terms in terms of this game now again I'm not going to be generous towards Kramnik specifically related to this game because even though he could be referring to a different event based on other research that he's done it seems very clear to me that someone probably mentioned the video Taliban says he cheated he card drew him a title to the game obviously that's proof that he card was cheating unfortunately as you can tell even from this game I was getting cooked hard in this game very very hard I was very very lucky to um to not lose this game nonetheless Tal Baron drew this game and he did I believe win the title Tuesday so that's the first little bit and now let's keep moving on so moving along um let's let's see what else do we have um there was apparently a Kramnik video that he posted this morning in both English and Russian now I'm not going to show the video itself because I don't feel like I really should be going into depth on this stuff I don't I feel like you're only giving visibility to someone who's making claims that are just not right so I will however give you guys a TLDR on the whole video the TLDR which I did see on Reddit so just to give credit to the person who wrote this they said Kramnik wants an investigation in by chess.com into Hikaru Nakamura's performance as he feels like they're statistically unlikely and he feels that chess.com doing this shows that they recognize no one is above reproach that they take cheating seriously and that it'll help end any speculation on this matter as we'll have some hard data to work with he's creating a petition for this and is inviting people to sign it he argues that if they did it for Neiman they can do it for Naka now first problem obviously is that two situations are not the same obviously Hans Neiman is an admitted cheater he's someone who cheated online and he admitted to it that is not up for dispute that is in the chess.com report clear as black and white or clear as night and day that's the first thing 
Um, but let's keep going. So it says some of the some of the performances that concern Kramnik and motivated him to speak up, aside from chess.com's lack of response to his private correspondence on the matter, are listed here. Uh, I guess there's a link. I don't know what that's a is that a link to an image? Uh not sure. Um oh yeah, it's a link to the image. Uh let me let me find it was a link to my it was linked to four of four four of my results. Let me let me copy this. The new tab. Um to show show this to you guys. Yeah, th this is an I am GURP. So this is this is a stat thing. It says average rating of opponents result in consecutive games and the performance. So you'll see the average rating talking about the result and these very, very impressive looking numbers. Of course, infinity would apply no matter who it is. I, I suspect that people might say they're like, wow, infinity, what does that mean? It's like playing at like 4,000 plus. It doesn't mean anything because in chess, if you have a perfect score, you have an infinity score. So Fabiano Caruana, who played in the Singfield Cup in 2014, when he started out seven out of seven in that event, he had an infinity score. His score was infinity. It was perfect. So, um, so your first these stats. Now, I will talk about this in a second, but let's just keep going with the TLDR. Uh, let me find the TLDR. They say, um, I think had he started off doing this to begin with, he would have been better received. I do think it's a, it's a reasonable request to vet fantastic performances like Naka has, not necessarily each and every time they happen, but at least just wants to show whether or not they're likely to happen at all. It saves others grief in the future if they are likely, and if they aren't, well, we know who to keep a closer eye on. I personally think it would be great to see Chess.com do this, as they clearly did something similar for Neiman. I'm not a mathematician, so while I think Naka's performances are possible due to the human condition factor, intimidation, tilt, play style differences, etc., I don't know how that measures against or measures about against what we can mathematically deduce. So having experts look into this and helping settle this is something I look forward to, even as someone on Naka's side. No, no, I, I don't need to read the TL. I'm just I'm just reading the TLDR for you guys, um, just so just so that you can um, you you can see see what I'm referring to. Um, so yeah, so that's the TLDR. Now there are many problems. I mean, let me pull the stat up. There are many, many pro many problems, but we're, we're gonna take it one step at a time. First big problem with what Kramnik is doing is Kramnik is someone who's from a different generation. He's not someone who grew up playing chess online. So because of that, Kramnik does not understand the massive difference between, well, maybe he does because he's been flagged a million times, but uh, Kramnik's played a lot of chess um, over the board, he has not played a lot of games online. So the difference between playing with an increment and playing without an increment is massive. And I'll give you a perfect example of this. Daniel Naroditsky, another streamer commentator who everybody knows, he is one of the absolute best players in Blitz with no increment, or Bolt for that matter. When I play Danny at 3-0, I mean, I think I beat Danny on average, but Danny is somebody who is probably, in my estimation, he's, he's on the edge of being number three in the world in Blitz. I would say Danny in 3-0 is number three in the world alongside Ali Reza. So, um, so I, I would say that Daniel is, is number three in the world alongside Ali Reza. Of course, they can go back and forth, but without increment, he is easily number three online with no increment. Now, if Daniel were to play online with increment, he's actually played in some of the SEC qualifiers, etc. I would say that Daniel is not even maybe top 20 in the world. Not even top 20 in the world um, at, with increment. And that's just because with increment, a lot of there are a lot of these tricks or what I think Vornik referred to as the dark arts, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but these, these sort of these dark arts tricks matter a lot less. It's more about the objective moves and the quality of the moves themselves. Whereas without increment, there are a lot of times in a game where you start making moves where you know the game will drag on, you know the mouse speed is going to come into play, and um, it is a very different situation. The dark arts, yeah, I, I'll give you one, I'll try to give you guys one example of that um, in a second. But that's the first thing increment versus non increment. Second thing is offline versus online, which I'm going to talk about, which is in terms of online ratings, people have to realize that these ratings correlate with the number of games you play. And actually, when I look at the stat, you know what Kramnik should have done when he looked at the stat? He should have looked at the stat. He should have looked at these 2,900 players. And he should have been, wait a second. Like one of these guys that I beat, the Ar Ardar 16 or whatever he is, his blitz rating over the board is 2,167. His blitz rating is 2167. My my blitz rating over the board is something like 2870, I guess, or something like that. I don't know exactly. So you're talking about a 700 point differential there. Um, so if Kramnik really wanted to actually, if he was doing this in good faith and look, trying to actually figure out what's going on, he should be looking at the players who get these ratings as high. Because the truth is, there are 2900s that I will play against where I am not going to put up these scores. And there are other 2900s where I can just crush them game after game after game after game. And for everybody who's watching the other day specifically, you'll notice that after playing like one or two games, I could tell, does this guy have a style that's dangerous? Do I want to play a lot of games? How many games do I want to play? So that's, that's the main thing. Um, um, 
is that you have to realize online versus offline but then there's also another very important point which Kramnik misses and there's this concept called farming now Kramnik was was basically saying that a lot of people have less games and they don't have streaks like mine there is a very good reason for this as well now if you log on to the internet let's just say you're a top player I'm just going to use Fabiano as an example if you're Fabiano Caruana okay and you come online to play chess okay you come online to play chess what what is Fabiano doing when he plays chess online Fabiano really has only like two or two or three things that he can do number one play a tournament like title Tuesday play for prize money obviously like you want to play against the best players you want to try to win some money additionally you might just want to play some practice games against other top players just so that you feel like you're in form right before a big event whatever it might be like everyone's done this Fabiano's done it. I've done it. it's like right before you play the St. Louis Rapid Blitz or something you get online you get on chess.com you play a bunch of blitz games against like the 3,000 level players try to warm up for the event so those are the two main reasons now if you're Fabiano do you want to log online and waste hours and hours trying to farm someone beat them for plus one where if you basically slip on a banana pill you lose 15 points no because first of all you're playing someone much weaker so it's not really a challenge you know you're going to win the goal is to just basically not slip slip on the banana pill because if you slip on the banana pill you lose 15 points and then you're mad at yourself you win like six seven games you lose one game you lose 15 you're like wait a second I just wasted an hour of my life what what am I even doing like what's what am I even doing why why do this however for people who are streamers very specifically myself as well as Daniel Nero Ditsky, it's completely different because when we get adopted when we play these blitz games crushing people actually makes for very good content so that's the um that's the other thing that Kramnik does not understand when it comes to farming so like Magnus Carlson's a good example too of course Magnus doesn't play a lot of blitz why would Magnus play someone at 2600 and just beat them over and over again it doesn't do anything for Magnus it doesn't he's not a content creator so for Magnus specifically he's not gonna do it Fabiano is not gonna do it but Daniel has content to make I have content to make um so we do that because farming is fun it makes for a good video if you if you adopt some and beat them 10 in a row it's a great video so that that's another part that he misses and then the last part that I will refer to um I think people mention this in statistics obviously for the millionth time I will say this um I'm obviously not a data scientist but I did see a lot of people comment commenting and they were saying that essentially when you look at um you look at streaks essentially they're not it's something called like independent event I think a good way of looking at it as an independent event is like you look at title Tuesday nobody ever has had two back-to-back -back scores of 11 and 0. I've done it Magnus has done it we've done it once and then we have not been able to do it more than one time what is the reason for that it's because a those are actually independent events and B there's no psychology because you're, you're playing completely different players and they're very strong they're not weak players too like in title Tuesday you're playing the best players thank you chess dojo for the raid with 100 viewers appreciate it so beating people is fun yeah so that's the thing like when you look at when, when you look at it those are independent events um when you play in title Tuesday so of course nobody's ever done it I've done it like twice Magnus has done it twice or three times um but we never have gone like 40 out of 40 or whatever whatever it might be um so that's the other part of it um and then psych uh, general psychology I find it very very ironic um that that Kramnik can, can, can seems to not thank you Kramnik seems to not understand psychology either because considering that psychology is one of the biggest reasons that Kramnik beat um Kramnik beat Gary Kasparov in their match and what I mean by that is like the psychology game that Kramnik understood was like Kasparov could not admit that he couldn't tear down the Berlin Wall so Kasparov Kasparov ego wise could not understand so he kept going to the same line wasn't able to break through Kramnik won a couple of games with the white pieces won the match so the psychology is a big thing actually I would argue that when I play people like 10 games in a row if they lose the first four or five games there's going to be a game in the next two or three where they lose the game and they blunder on like move 10 they blunder in the first 20 moves because you start getting tilted you start blundering you start making mistakes um and that is just a part of the game and then of course when you're much weaker as well it just becomes it becomes extremely hard to overcome that's just the bottom line so that's really pretty much all that I have to say on the topic again I mean I would I I, I think chess.com does actually look at the games that I play the games that Magnus plays I think they look at the winners of title Tuesday I think it goes on and on go full screen I could um but but the bottom line is I do think chess.com looks at it. in fact I'm very proud that like all these games I've played I think they do get analyzed I do think they set a baseline for example if you look at the all the online games that are played you look at the champions chess tour even I I know when it was chess 24 those games were analyzed by Ken Regan I believe at FIDE um I assume they still are you play over the board also they had, also in every contract you sign it says the games are submitted to the fair play team chess.com of course a little bit different obviously because it's not FIDE 
Um, but nonetheless, chess.com, I do believe, looks at all the games. And I expect chess.com to look at the games. I hope they look at the games because there's nothing there. That's the bottom line. So um, that's that's really all that I think I have to say, uh, broadly speaking. I, I, I think the one last thing I'm going to end, end with, because um, I, I don't want to spend too much too much more time on this, um, is, you know, Kramnik keeps making these sort of these little, these little like baiting comms. He's like, true research, true statistics. Um, and, and he doesn't say anything. He just goes on a long, long, long rant for this. So as far as I'm concerned, I mean, I hope chess.com looks at the games. I hope they put something out there. Um, I'm all for it. Of course they should, obviously. So yeah, I know Kramnik, I don't, I don't really know where this is coming from. Honestly. Um, it, it seems to me that for whatever reason, it's become some kind of personal vendetta or something. Um, but yeah, it's 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 all very strange. But as I said, I've got nothing to hide. I hope chess.com looks at the games. I hope they put something out there. I hope they do. Because uh, I, I know that I haven't cheated. And um, and so it's just sad to see from Kramnik. That's that's the bottom line. Just just very, very sad to see um, what he's doing.